Captivate 2017 is great for giving you access to a whole bunch of cutout characters. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, the assets icon from the toolbar will open up the My Assets window, and you'll have access to a whole bunch of different cutout characters. And this is great for a while, but I think, you know, we'll all agree that at some point you'll probably need something more than what's here. And of course, Captivate has partnered with the eLearning Brothers to provide you access to a whole bunch of additional cutout people as well. And of course, you can search for the various things you need. For this particular project that I'm working on, I need a dancer. And if I just type in a search for dancer, unfortunately, nothing comes up. So I'm going to be forced to create my own dancer with the background that I intend to use, so which means I'm going to need to do a little bit of Photoshop work. So if you're fortunate enough to also have the Creative Cloud, uh, you know, you'll be able to uh, open up Photoshop once you've found the image that you're looking for from uh, whichever website you're, you're searching for, uh, for your images. Now, to remove the background, um, Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 release um, really makes this super easy. Uh, all you need to do is go into the Selection drop-down menu and choose Select and Mask. And this will open up a sort of new filter interface, if you will, where you can go in and, uh, and of course, select the elements that you wish to keep. So. I'm going to start off with this uh, quick selection tool over here with the plus icon uh, indicated here. And I'm just going to sort of paint over top of the character in my shot here, the dancer. And this will be quite good for isolating some of that background out. You know, you can use the zoom controls here. I can bring this into 100% if I just want to see it up close. and Make sure I've selected as much as possible some of the hair I need to select here. And we'll just make sure that the arm is fully selected. Really makes it a lot easier over previous versions of Photoshop to isolate these items from the background. And that looks pretty good. Let's just go down to the bottom here, make sure the Shoes are fully selected. The feet are fully selected. And you can, of course, um, experiment with uh, some of the settings. So here I've got some white that's also selected. So I'm going to switch to the minus and subtract this area from the selection. And, of course, with uh, you've got different views that you can use to just sort of see um, what's been selected and what's not. This overlay view is quite useful. The uh, red area shows off uh, any areas that are going to be, become part of that um, that's going to get cut from that, that image. So you can see a few things here. Let's, uh, let's subtract some of this here. Isolate that. And we can use the Refine Edge brush right here to go into some of the areas. I'm just going to resize using the square brackets on my keyboard here to isolate. We're in the hair area where, uh, you know, perhaps it's not selecting it uh, properly. We'll do the same thing on this side here. That's pretty good. It's not perfect. It never will be, but uh, you know, you can you can kind of play around with it uh, for quite a while and turn it into a project unto itself. But I think once you're, uh, you can also go full black and white and just take a closer look, uh, similar to how the old uh, masking tools would work for you. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to uh, just go back to onion skin here. Now let's just bring this up to 100% so we can see what's going to show through, what's not. I think we're uh, we're pretty good. I'm going to click on OK. I might crop it a little bit just to make sure that we're just selecting, um, you know, just what we need from this image. 
So let's just crop that down a little bit here. And I think I'm ready to bring it into Captivate. So let's just, uh, just do some more refining with the crop there. You know, no sense making the image larger than it needs to be. And um, one thing I will consider doing, of course, as well, is uh, as I'm building my Adobe Captivate projects, very often I'm, I'm trying to think ahead of the game here and, and, and applying uh, some resizing and some optimization because every time you add an image or anything else, quite frankly, to your Captivate project, you are increasing its size. Now, when you publish it out, many of the objects are optimized for you, uh, but not all are going to be optimized as much as you potentially can do when you're manually controlling this stuff. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the image size. Now, I happen to know that this project is 1024 by uh, 698, so I can reduce this height, let's say down to 700 anyway, and just get this a little bit smaller because it just will never need to be as large as it was before and then of course i can save as in this case here i'm going to want to save this as a png so i can maintain that transparent background and we'll just save this to my desktop here i'm going to keep it the same name as what was there before um and we'll just go with uh, smallest file size. Again, we're always trying to optimize those e-learning projects. So now what I can do is once I'm back in Captivate, I can use the media icon and click on image. And we'll just go to my desktop where I save that. And we can bring that image in. You can see it totally isolated from the background there. So we can place this on the slide where we need it and we have our cutout image. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.